So while I was gone, Valerie was here all night trying to work on a problem to, for me to solve. So she wrote up on the board, and I haven't seen it yet, so let's see what it is. And oh, hey, Valerie, model this. Oh, gosh, y double dot and two, uh, and it's multiplied by the derivative of itself. Ah, uh, this, no, this is just too hard. I can't do this one. I'm, I'm not going to do this one, sorry. You're going to let me give up that easily? You can't give up that easily. Even if you see a hard problem, you have to attack it and break it down. So we're not going to give up that easily. We're going to break this problem down and model it. OK, ready? OK, well, we have a lot of y's and y dots. And I'm getting a little confused with all the derivatives. So let's try to put this in a state space model. And so we'll assign the specific variables. So let's first say, OK, let's just make y x1. With the x1, we're going to call that y. Okay? And how we have this derivative, let's just call it y, x2. So x2 equals y dot. Okay? And remember, if we look at x2 is also equal to x1 dot, because it's the derivative here. So x1 dot. So let's remember that. And again, we have an input u. We'll call that u1. OK, so we have rewritten our variables. So let's substitute them into our equation. So for y double dot, well, that's just x2 dot. So let's write that x2 dot. 2y is equal to x1. And now y squared is x1 squared. And now x dot is just x2 plus x2 here, and then u1 minus 8. OK, so this looks a little bit better. Everything just in x1 or x2 and u1. Great. So if we want to rewrite this in our state space, well, we know x1 dot here. So now we have x1 dot equals x2. And we know the dynamics for both of these states, x1 and x2. And it's in terms of x1, x2, and u1. Great, so actually we've modeled it in the state space here. But we still have these nonlinear terms. So what can we do to get rid of those? Well, we can linearize our system. And when we linearize, right, the first thing we have to do is figure out the equilibrium points. OK, so with the state space form, it's really nice because we just set our dynamics to 0. We know our dynamics must be 0. And then we can solve for the equilibrium points of x1 and x2. And we also assume that the equilibrium point of u is 0. So let's write that up here. So u1e, equilibrium point, is equal to 0. And now we need to find x1e and x2e. All right, so let's do that. Well, let's start with this equation. So. If we do x1 dot is equal to 0, then the equilibrium point of x2 must be 0. Pretty straightforward. So there's one equilibrium point. Let's now look at this set, this equal to 0, and see what we can do here. So now we'll say 0 is equal to 2x1e plus x1e squared x2e plus x2 e u1 e minus 8. OK, so we wrote them all out. But if we go back to what this is, oh, we know x2 e is 0, so let's fill this in here. Well, we see that this value has x2 e, that's 0. That goes to 0. This has, both these values are 0, so this is 0. And we are left with just these two terms. So if we move the 8 over here and then divide by 2, we will see that our x1e is equal to 4. Okay, So we have found both of our equilibrium points. So this one is now 4. OK, so now we can linearize around this equilibrium point. And the nice thing about these bro being broken up is we can just do one at a time. So let's start with um, just the x1 dot. 
And remember that we have to, when we linearize, we have to rewrite our variables. So x1 now becomes x1e, the equilibrium point, plus delta x1. And then x2 equals x2e plus the perturbation x delta x2. And the same for u. We do u is equal to, or u1, u1e plus delta u1. So we have our new variables here. And let's linearize each equation. So we'll start with this one. So we know that if we do our derivative of this value, we are only left with the delta x1. This goes to 0, right? So we'll just write that directly here. Delta x1 dot on this side. And then we have x2. So we can plug that in, but we know x2e is 0. So we're left with just delta x2. This one, linearize. Done. OK, what about this one? Well, let's just break it down. Start with the left side. So if we take the derivative of x2, which is this value, this again is 0, so we're just left with that. So we get delta x2 derivative. OK, so now let's go to the right side. OK, this is where we get a little bit more complicated. But let's name this whole thing f. It's a function of x1, x2, and u1. OK, well, let's do the Taylor series expansion. So we would do f of x1e, x2e, and u1e. And remember, this is at the equilibrium point, so we know that this will always go to 0. OK, so now we have to do partial derivatives. Ah, oh, but there's so many units here. There's x1, x2, and, and u1. Well, the nice thing about partials is you just take one at a time. So let's start with x1. So we're going to take the partial derivative of this in terms of x1. So here we have a 2. And then here we have, well, we have x2 in front. And then we have to take the derivative of this. So we'll get 2 x1. And these are evaluated at the equilibrium points, right? So these should be equilibrium points. OK, not too bad. This doesn't have an x1. That doesn't have an x1. So there's our first term. OK, so now let's do the same thing. Take the partial derivative in terms of x2. Nothing here. OK, here we have, we take the derivative of x2 in terms of x2. We'll just get x1 squared. e at the equilibrium point squared. This has an x2 as well. But we take the derivative, we'll just get u plus u1 e, and that's 0. Almost there. So that's our u, oops, sorry, x2, x2. And now we just have to do u. So take the partial of this in terms of u1. This would be 0, this would be 0. This one would just be x2, x2e, and that would be 0. So times the delta u1. OK, so it's a little bit long, but let's fill in these values, because we know all these equilibrium points, right? OK, well, let's start over here. x2e is 0, so this term just goes away. x1e does have a value, and then ue is 0, so this one will go to 0. And this one is also, we have x2e is 0, right? So this also goes to 0. OK, so what are we left with? Let's see. Okay, so we have 2 delta x1 plus x1e, which is 4. So 4 squared is 16, delta x2, and then we had a 0 here. So this would be our linearized version of the x2 perturbation, and this is our linearized version of the x1. So these would be the equations, and then we can put it into our standard form. So let's do that. All right, so I've cleared the board a little bit. This is where we left off with. This was our linearized state space representation of this equation using these states and assuming this equilibrium point. So now we have to put it into the standard form. So let's just remember what that is. 
And in this case, we've actually changed to delta x and delta x1 and x2 and delta u. So we change our equation just a little bit. We can think of it now as delta x, but we still use a, a matrix A, delta x, then these are vectors, plus b, now we're delta u, and we can call it still y, but we'll choose y based on delta x now, and then d delta u. So now we just need to put it into this form. And well, we can definitely do that from here. So let's just write that over here. Delta x1, delta x2. Get the derivatives of both of these. Okay, and A, so we can, we can figure out A matrix. So we see that it doesn't depend on x, delta x1, so it's a zero and then a one. And then here we have a two and a 16. So x1 and delta x2, these are our states now, our linearized states. And they don't depend on u, but let's just write it down to be clear. So b here would be 0, 0 times delta u1. Okay, so that's our first equation here. And our second one, well, we have to kind of choose u. And here we were looking at x1 to be the output, and now we'll, we'll assign it to delta x1. So here's our vector again, delta x2. So now it'll be dependent on delta x1 and not on delta x2. And then just for completeness, we look at d would be 0 and delta u1 would be there. So here is our final form of our equation, and we've broken this complicated equation that Valerie made up, that she gave us of a very complex system, but we were able to break it down one step at a time, first using state space to kind of organize all the different states in the system, then using linearization, so finding the equilibrium points, and breaking it down, doing the linearization of each of the equations, so x1 and then x2 separately, so it kind of makes it a little bit easier, it breaks it down, and then we're able to get it in this form. So don't be intimidated by hard problems that Valerie gives you. And all the problems that are hard, Valerie always makes them, so you can blame her. Um, but that's how we can break down a nonlinear system using state space.